Hey, Motor Man here. If you're not familiar with this channel, I'm a motor officer and a retired motor officer instructor. I'm also the maker of the Ride Like a Pro video. And we talk about everything related to motorcycles in addition to tips, tricks, and techniques for riding. But this time, today, we did something completely different. I was your man on the street. Now, a lot of people probably realizing that there's a shortage not only of motorcycles, but of cars and pretty much everything. So I went to a couple of dealers and I got the managers or the owner's opinion on what's going on and is it gonna get better or worse? So stay tuned. My first stop was local Honda dealer, Action Honda. And this is a shot of their parking lot. There is nobody there. There's uh, virtually no motorcycles outside. I think there was one sitting out front. Uh, as far as the inventory inside, you'll see they normally would have the showroom packed with motorcycles, ATVs, dirt bikes, etc. But maybe four or five units in the whole place. This is Action Honda's showroom. And as you can see, it's slim pickings. Normally this showroom would be filled with dirt bikes and cruisers and gold wings, ATVs, side-by-sides, you name it, they would have it here. So much so that you could barely squeeze through the showroom to the parts department. But right now, especially at a single dealership like this that they only sell Honda, these dealerships, these businesses have been hit hardest with the supply chain problem. When you shut down that supply chain and you do it on and off for a year or more, it's going to take at least, in my opinion, at least two years before the supply catches up with demand. And it's not just motorcycles. As I said, it's everything. Everything right now is in short supply. Now that's supposed to be really hot, the, the trail, but but you got one of those. I'm holding that. One. <laughs> Is that you're not Seriously. selling? Well, Scott wanted to buy it when we first got it. Mm -hmm. and then he's, things got really slow, so now I'm, I've still got it, and people can come in and look at it, and eventually we'll go ahead and sell it. Mm -hmm. And right. and the same thing. With, what's that model? The passport? Is it called the passport? Well, no. This is the this is the. Uh, Cub, Super Cub. Super Cub, yeah. Reminiscent of the old, what was it, 50cc? 50cc Cub. Which was the, the most, biggest selling motorcycle that ever. Most sold right? vehicle in the world. Vehicle, even past, surpassed oh, cars. Yeah. They claimed, and I saw an article years ago, that uh, if you put Volkswagen's production down and put Ford's production down since the Model T, that both of them together have not come near to selling that, that vehicle sold years ago. And they originally, back in what, the, the 60s that they started importing them here, early 60s? 65s, right around right there. What, do you remember what they cost back then? About 250 bucks, something like that. that. And now how much? Uh, that's about $4,000 out the door with $4,000. Let me, I got to answer that. You're the only one here? I'm the only one. Steve's here. But he's up the what about uh, getting parts? Are they just as difficult as getting parts? Parts haven't been a problem yet. Uh, they're starting to show up. There's supposed to be a shortage of tires, rubber. Mm -hmm. So that's coming as far as we know it's going to be the whole world. It's going to be shortage of rubber. So from what you were telling me earlier, they have, Honda's got the, the, the vehicles built, the, the ATVs, the A, the... From what I understand that they've got uh, a lot of vehicles built. A lot of them have been shipped from Japan and different countries. Then they had the problem in California, they couldn't get them off the ships in California because the dock workers are not working or something out there. It's supposed to be ships off the ocean out there just can't get unloaded. Stuff that uh, Honda had in stock, they, they put everything together they can put together. One of the other problems is that you can't get truckers to go into California. I had a friend who had some trucks and he would not go to California because of the restrictions all the, all the uh, impact fees and things that they put on was just wasn't worth going there, no matter what was there. And that's you got that problem bad out there. So you get them off the ships and get them unloaded and off the docks, but nobody can take them anywhere. And then you have dock problems that they claim they have out there also. I don't know. That it seems to be that Honda is shipping us more things now, uh, but. I get a tractor and trailer in every three or four days, and there'll be one vehicle on it. Again, I apologize for the sound. Sonny went on to say that he's probably got 50 customers that want to buy 
Honda, be the motorcycles, ATVs, dirt bikes, whatever, but he just cannot get the stock in. If he had the stock there, he could sell them, rehire his old employees or find new ones. But that's just the situation here at this Honda dealership. This is the local Chevrolet dealership, this Castriota Chevrolet. And I went inside and told them what I was doing. And they, of course, refused to talk to me. I think they're all in the witness protection program. Whatever reason, they wouldn't talk to me. But this is a shot of their parking lot. It's, as you can see, empty. Usually jam-packed with cars and trucks, but they've got virtually no, uh, no stock at all. A uh, salesman told me it's been that way for almost a year now. It's a shame. No vehicles to sell, no customers. Service is doing okay, though. Next, I went over to Newport Ritchie Harley-Davidson. And as you look around the showroom, it appears that they are they have bikes galore. The only problem is only 10 of them are new motorcycles. All the rest are used. And I did get a chance to speak with Anthony, otherwise known as Batman. He is the manager there. And uh, he knew a lot more than he claimed to know. But I got it out of him. But anyway, here's what, this is what I'm here about. Uh, I'm doing a video on the, the, the supply and demand, how people can't, uh, dealers can't get enough bikes. There's more demand than there are product and why that's occurring. Uh, you got five minutes to talk about that? I don't even that? know. I don't know uh, the well, answers but to I'm gonna, these I'm going to ask you some easy questions so, so you'll be able to get it. Do we go in your office for a minute? Yeah, I, if I knew the answer to these questions. They all say, I don't know anything. He knows, and I'm going to get it out of him. As soon as I crank up the pressure, he'll talk. He'll fold like a cheap lawn chair. Just wait and see. Money. Yeah, I wish I knew why. Yeah, everyone's answered everything's politics. All right, so I'm here with Anthony. He's the sales manager here at uh, uh, Newport Ritchie Harley Davidson. And I'm going to ask him a few questions about supply and demand and the problems that not just Harley Davidson, but car dealers, everybody, and just about every product is having. Well, I haven't asked you anything yet. So I'm going to tell you a couple of things for you. I just came from Honda, and he's got, uh, I think, like four motorcycles in, in the showroom, one of which he won't sell because he want, there's a big demand for him, and he just wants to make people have the ability to see it in their showroom. So what he's saying is, that what their problem is there, is they have the vehicles made, the ATVs, the motorcycles, Honda's got them made, but they're missing things like tires. They can't get tires from, uh, I guess they all come from China, and as well as computer chips and the other things that the, the, the vehicles need to run. Are you having any, any problems like that? Our last one was shipping. Um, we had 16 bikes coming, but somehow they came in way of Texas and it took forever to get here and that was where the problem was with our last batch of bikes it just it should have been here two weeks ago and it wound up they just arrived now how many bikes you normally say two years ago would you have in stock new bikes oh it would be full it would be full now I have 10 you have 10 new bikes all the rest are used motorcycles yeah and, and where are you getting the used bikes from Trade-ins. Trade. So, uh, the price uh, uh, the price of used vehicles, uh, motorcycles, gone up. In other words, you're having to give people more money for their bike than than you would normally, just because you need inventory. You go with what the market goes. You know, you, we're here to sell bikes. So if the market calls for more on that bike, that's what we're gonna do. We're here to sell bikes. Mm -hmm. And has the price gone up on the new bikes? It's uh, Harley put that um, surcharge surcharge in there, but. We do what we can do. Yeah, I, I noticed that a while back when they, I think when they first came out with the 2021s, there was like a $300 surcharge way at the bottom on their website. And I seen the other day, it's up to, I think, $950. Yes, sir. But is that is that because of inflation that they need to get more for the motorcycle or just because they, there aren't enough bikes for for the demand? Everything, everything. My, my buddy owns a lawn service. It cost him over $1,000 this month for gasoline, which, triple you know his fee so everything for every business has gone up throughout the united states yeah. so you know follows through yeah i've seen it in car dealers they say the a car that would normally at stickers say for twenty they're getting 26 27 000, depending on the car 
and the demand for it up to 10,000 over MSRP just because they, they can't get enough new cars and people demand them. Yeah, I hear that in the car stores too. And, and used cars have just gone way, way up in price. Have used motorcycles gone up in value? A little bit. But, but not like the cars, I think it's 17% yeah. on cars. Not like the cars. Cars are crazy, especially pickup trucks. Yeah. Now, do you see it getting better, or is, has it gotten better in the last couple of months, or is it getting worse? I think everything is going to get better. i got to think positive. If I don't think positive every day, you know, everything, like we just got our bikes, so that's a positive thing. And I'm selling one right now. Mm -hmm. So, but, but I understand that you, 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 know, you don't want to be a downer, but if, if you had more motorcycles, you'd obviously be able to sell a lot more. Would that be a correct statement? No, I'm, I'm finding them. If you have something that you want, I'll find it. Just get a hold of me and I'll do my best to find it for you, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, I appreciate it, Anthony, and uh, the best of luck to you. I know, I, I, in my opinion, I think things have to get better. When you shut the whole world down for months at a time, it takes the supply chain a long time to catch up to that, at least that's what it appears to be and like you said it's not just cars or motorcycles it's everything, everything. I, I mean for for a while there uh, i think a sheet of plywood went from 20 bucks to 90 dollars. it's 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 crazy it's and crazy stuff that's what i was telling you about the trucks we used to get trucks 10 bikes 15 bikes now you get one will come today maybe two will come tomorrow even the trucking is totally different than it used to be uh, everything has to go back to normal sooner or later yeah so and, and really, it, I don't think we were hit here in Florida near as bad as places like New York and California where they sh they're still, half of them are still shut down. Yeah, we're lucky to be in Florida. Yeah, it's especially the way. My personal opinion is that things are going to get worse before they get better. At this very moment, there are 90 container ships out at sea waiting to pull into San Francisco and California area. They can't pull in because there are ships there that still haven't been unloaded. Take a look at this video. I think you'll enjoy it.